Hi, I'm Shane, and this is Tom, and this is Tony, and we are from the Drum Center of Portsmouth in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. And today, we are doing a comprehensive overview of Ludwig USA drum sets. We wanted to do this video because I don't think a lot of people realize the variety that Ludwig has in their high-end lines. A lot of people think of just one line or two lines, like Legacy or Classic Maple. Well, there's, there's more than that, and so, we wanted to show you what these sound like, and so this can help you when it comes time for you to pick out your Ludwig drum set. So we went through the five high-end USA lines, which are the Club 8, the Legacy Mahogany, the Legacy Maple, Classic Maple, and here's the Keystone X. And Tom, tell us about the specs. Five very similar looking drums here, but five very different shells. Starting with the Club 8, we have a seven ply, two maple, three poplar, two maple shell uh, with a full round over bearing edge. And the Legacy Mahogany is a three ply uh, mahogany poplar mahogany with quarter inch maple re-rings. The Legacy Maple is very similar. It's just got maple instead of mahogany. So maple poplar maple with maple re-rings. Classic Maple is a straight wall seven ply maple shell with uh, 45 degree bearing edges. And the Keystone X is a five ply shell that is one red oak, three maple, one red oak. And that has a dual 45 degree bearing edge. Uh, so the, the bearing edge actually centers on the, the shell. Lots of different, different sounds here. And so what we wanted to do was get all the same color because that's going to influence the sound, right? And we wanted to get the, as close as we could size-wise, and so there were a couple of differences, right, uh, Tony, in terms yeah. of... Okay. Yeah, pretty close, but uh, the club dates had a uh, slightly shallower uh, slightly shallower rack tom, so 10 by 7 and a 12 by 8. And then the Keystone X had a 2-inch uh, deeper bass drum, which was a 22 by 16. But well, otherwise, it's yeah. 10, 12, 14, 16. You know, all these kits ship with different heads, but we wanted to make it as, as close as possible so you can really hear the difference of the shells. So we changed all the heads to coated ambassadors. There is a little bit of muffling in the kick drum, but that was just because it, it made it sound more like, what, I mean, this is the way you're gonna play these drums more often than not. And then tuning wise, I used a TuneBot. We got a similar um, throughout the whole line and you'll hear actually there's some differences in the way that the drums sound pitch wise, even though they are tuned to the same note. Miking, I used primarily Earthworks mics. QTC 30s as the overheads, that's the primary bulk of the uh, drum mix. Then there are all the DM 20s on, uh, on, the, on the drums and the Telefunken on the snare drum. Kick drum, I used a D6 and a KSM 32, which kind of gives you the attack and the low end. You used a tune bot? Yes. And everything was the same? Yep. Okay, so let's start with the club date.
But Club Data is one of my favorites uh, of the Ludwig USA offerings. It's just a really, really simple design. I mean, obviously you have the center lugs, which is classic Club Date design. The Imperial style lug though, which I think is really neat. But I really like this shell. You know, it's mostly maple, a little bit of poplar in there for a little extra warmth. And this, this full round over bearing edge, I'm just really, really into that sound these days. It just, you get a little more head contact that way and that transfer of energy goes right into the shell and you just sort of hear a little bit more of the, the warmth of the shell resonating. Um, I was really impressed with these drums. The best way I could describe the feel of these was like it was like playing a V-drum set. <laughs> like I feel like I was playing mesh heads. They yeah. didn't really come back to me. They have a, they do have a, a softer feel. They yeah. sort of, yeah, they do sort of suck the sound inward just a little bit, yeah. more so than like the Keystone X or mm -hmm. the Classic Maple, which had that nice sharp bearing edge that really, you know, projects. I think, I think too, like with these drums, I, I found that maybe Tuning wise, you know, we, we set the, the tuning with the classic maple, um, and maybe the tuning didn't translate quite as well on the club dates. They might have wanted to have been a little bit higher. Um, just just a, a thing I noticed is maybe if we were trying to get the best sound out of those drums, maybe the tuning would have been a little. A little I different. did like the sound, and what I did, what I really liked about it was that I've never played a drum set that sounded like it. Mm. Like when I, I, I was when I was playing, I was like, this is. It's a cousin to these. It's not yeah. a brother or a sister. It's, yeah, it was very much its own yeah. its own kind of animal, and and you know the tom sizes were slightly different, yeah. so there was that. But um, the kick drum actually kind of stood out mm -hmm. as well. It, it was it was kind of pillowy, um, but it just had this really really nice round full note that was just yeah. We you just wanted it. to play it all day. We yeah. did it right after the classic maple, and it was noticeably more toneful mm -hmm. in in just overall sound. Yeah. Yeah.
Next up is a Ludwig Classic Maple. This is the uh, bread and butter line for Ludwig. It's the bread and butter line for Drum Center of Portsmouth. We love the Classic Maple drums. They have, to me, uh, it is the ideal maple shell sound. When I hit the toms on Classic Maple, I think to myself, this is what maple drums are supposed to sound like. Uh, they respond the way I want them, want them to. Just perfect tone. That's exactly what I thought when I sat down behind them too. Uh, they're, as soon as you play them, you just go, yeah, this is exactly what a maple drum set should sound like. It's, it sort of sets the bar, I think, as, as far as maple is concerned. Um, they're, they've got this nice bright attack, you know, super, super nice warm mid-range and just enough low end to, you know, make you feel it, but it's not, uh, it's not quite as dark as something like the mahogany or something like that. Yeah, I, I really, um, I think you guys will hear it in the in the playback as well, but what I like about it is that, you know, Shane and Tom both play totally differently, and depending upon who's playing them, the drums sound equally at home with both styles. So, yeah. like, when, when Shane's really laying into them, they, they kind of, like, it's almost like you're pressing in the accelerator pedal. They just kind of, like, open up more and explode. When Tom plays them, it's kind of a warmer, um, fatter sound, and I just, you know, it's hard to really say there's anything more versatile than a classic maple. Right. Agreed. And above everything here, these have the best tuning range, I feel. Absolutely. Yeah, I would say so. Like, you can go the lowest with these yeah. and the highest with them. Next, we have the Ludwig Keystone X. Now, this is the one I'm really excited about. This is the absolute sleeper in the line to me. I don't understand why this is not a wildly popular drum set. They are just, this kit is one of the best sounding drum sets we have in the store at any price. And I really like the way the head, the, the double 45 sit, the way the head sits on it. It gives me that attack, but combined with the oak, it just has that cut, that slice, that projection. Everything about this is just on point. I love these drums.
Yeah, and if you want a slightly more inherently controlled sound, I think that's a, a good way to go. The, the Keystone X is a good way to go. Uh, I found them to be just a little drier. Uh, they didn't sort of ring out quite as long as, as most of the other ones we played, so I thought that was just kind of a, an interesting quality of that shell. I think these were just, they sound like modern rock. Like they right. just, they, yeah. they, they sound right out of the gate, even with Coded Ambassadors. They just sound deeper, more EQ'd, more, there's more presence. Um, they're punchy as heck too, they're awesome. The oak control, like the, the, the maple controls the oak in it. Like yeah. the oak wants to be, hey, I'm oak. Yeah. <laughs> and the maple's like, no, 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 no. You know, we're gonna give you a little bit of warmth here. Yeah. Uh, I just, I love those drums, they're great. Excellent drums. Next up is the Legacy Maple. This is the shell that Ludwig did in the 60s, the 70s, and so they decided they wanted to bring that back. The problem is the people don't work there anymore. <laughs> they had to learn how to do this. And to do a three-ply shell with a very thick reinforcement ring is not easy. Wood wants to be straight, and when you try to make it a circle, it doesn't want to agree with you. So they had to figure out how to do it, and they did. I mean, this is spot on, complete replication of what they used to do. Yeah, if you uh, like that old Ludwig sound, it's, it's there. That's it. Right. But you have nice, new, fresh Ludwig hardware on it, and you can put heads on it, and it's, it, it comes to you in round, and you don't have to worry about dealing with all the stuff that, you know, vintage gear, those, those problems that vintage gear tends to have. Was it built on a Monday or a Friday? Right, yeah. right. <laughs>
Yeah. Ah! <laughs> this bearing edge is, uh, you can, you can see it when you put the head on how much shell contact there is. So again, you strike that head, that wood is responding. You're, you're getting a lot of shell sound out of these. They, they don't have the attack the classic maples have, but they have this tone kind of similar to the club dates, but they kind of blend somewhere in the middle. So it's got mm -hmm. brightness, but it's full of tone. It's not like a Keystone X where it's all attack and everything. It's got a rounder sound overall. I've always recommended classic maple over Legacy because I felt like the Classic Maple still had that Ludwig vibe, 100%, um, but I also had the tuning range and I had a more attractive price point. Whereas Legacy, your tuning range gets a little more narrow, your price goes up, but I have to say after, after this, these have won me over. Mm -hmm. um, they really have. Like I have, now I'm more on board with them as, okay, if I want that, that 70s, Ludwig sound, this is, this is the way to go. Next up here is the Ludwig Legacy Mahogany. Now this is the latest entry into their offering, and this is more of a, a replication of the older drums from the 40s and the 50s. And uh, I am, I'm already on board with these drums. I walked in a fan, I, I love the sound of these drums. I always described these as a, that nice fat analog sound that was rolled in lint. Uh, that was really the, my best way of describing them. But playing them in this setup was a lot of fun.
probably the most tone out of all of them, but also the quietest. Mm. Yeah, they are dark, noticeably dark for sure. Um, but I actually like that about them. These these actually, I think probably stood out as my my favorite of the of the five that we demoed. It just has so much body and so much darkness that you know you just when you sit down behind drums you just want them to to rumble you when you're in the throne right there with them and these do that but they're still so musical like tony was saying they're just so rich and and full of tone i, I just i was blown away by them yeah a lot of times we make comparisons between drums and like it's like playing a piano like there's certain kits that you you feel like you're playing like the notes on a piano, not just hitting a drum. And these two um, are, are kind of in that vein. And the mahogany is kind of like the darker version of that sound. Um, and one of the things I noticed right off the bat when I first listened to the playback was how there's like a sub low that kind of comes in that none of the other kits had. Um, and it's it's one of those things you may not hear in the room, depending upon the room. But like when you get mics on them, it's going to produce a lower sub kind of frequency that the other kids just, they don't have that. I feel like the, when I played these drums, I was, my initial instinct was that if you have a studio, this is where they belong. You know, they, these were work good in a live situation if you're close mic'd, um, but I, man, like, it, I, I was just thinking to myself, how many studio owners do I know? I just want to call them up and be like, you need to get one of these sets <laughs> because there's just a, a, especially in these sizes with the 10, 12, 14, and 16, because you can have those more modern sizes but have that really dark sound. Right. This is official. You've locked in. This is your favorite? This is number one for me. Okay. Yes. All right. So, Tony, what's your favorite and why? Um, it's tough. I love the attack of the Keystone X's. I love the tuning range of the uh, Classic Maples. Club Dates have, I think, maybe the most vibe. But for me, Legacy Maple, um, which is totally a surprise. It's not the kit that I went in thinking was going to yeah. surprise me. But I remember coming downstairs right after I got it tuned up and just said, like guys, like just wait until you hear this Legacy Maple kit. So that's that was that was mine. Well, my answer will be right after these messages. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, classic Maple. I, I, it's Classic Maple. I, I I have to say, you know, if there's just one drum set that we could sell here at the store, if we're only allowed to sell one drum set, it's Classic Maple. There's so many things I love about it, but the the value, the sound. Uh, it's the most versatile of all the drums that, that, that we've played. Um, I would love to have this. This is honorable mention, hands down, but I love Classic Maple and yeah, I love that too. <laughs> love that too.
Something worth mentioning is that Ludwig, they have more customization options than you could possibly imagine. If you want to get the blue olive badge or there's three different bass drum spur options. You can get the, the large classic lug or you can get the mini classic lug. You can get the Atlas mount. You can get the P1216D, which is the, the bracket they've offered for decades. You could get that direct on the shell or with a vibra band or you could get the triad bracket. That's what we're here to help you with. If you want to just dream up your perfect configuration, uh, that's what we're here for. You can call us up and we can we can help you build it out. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this helped you get a better idea of the sound that you're looking for. And uh, this has been one heck of a project for us. Be sure to subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel so that way you can get notified uh, as soon as these videos go up. So you could be the coolest kid. Yeah, don't use yeah, that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for your support. Thank you for spending your drum money with us. Thank you for being followers of our YouTube channel. And please visit our website for more info. Thanks a lot, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.